Today I'm going to show you how to use Vast. Um, Vast is similar to like Paperspace or AWS or something, but instead of uh, renting from a particular company, this is actually peer-to-peer -peer GPU rental. Um, so you're basically renting someone else's purchased GPU. Uh, it could be stored in a warehouse. It could be, or, sorry, a server uh, location. Um, it could be running directly into their home or something. So um, it's a pretty interesting interface. Uh, the reason you might use it is that it, uh, it saves you a lot of money. Um, so if you come to vast.ai, you'll just come here. Um, you'll want to click on console. You'll need to create an account. Um, I think it's fairly easy to set up, and I also think they give you $2 in free credits just to start working um, with like building your own machine. Um, so I'm just going to quickly walk you through the interface, sort of show you what I've learned uh, that works well, and uh, you can then try it out yourself. Um, okay, so the first thing you do is when you come to console, um, your settings will likely be different than mine, but um, this is a list of all of the different uh, servers you can rent. Um, you'll see that there are, in many cases, like RTXs that are 4x. Um, you know, you'll see that there's also like some 8x machines, so you can get like a pretty high performing machine for a fairly good price. Um, I don't think they have any P6000s or P5000s, so I can't really compare it directly to paper space. But in general, like there are some good machines here. Um, like I'm just looking here and I'm seeing an, a Titan RTX that has 24 uh, gigabytes of GPU, and that is well, it just disappeared. Um, so that's part of the deal too, is um, machines are just will disappear and you will rent the machine and then you will try to find it again and it might not be there because someone else has rented it. Um, but anyway, there's a way to like sort of look at this. This is your interface. Um, it sort of auto suggests what machines you should get. What I generally will do is I'll come, I'll click on this and I'll go to deal per, uh, per dollar per hour. Um, this will generally tell you like what the best machines are at a per price level. Um, if you've never messed with multiple machines, you might just want to look at the 1x and go for that. Um, other things that are really, really important to keep an eye on are how many uh, gigabytes of GPU spaces it actually have. Um, if you're doing StyleGAN, I generally don't recommend anything below 11 gigabytes. Um, you can set that over here uh, in GPU resource, so GPU RAM. Um, it might even offer you some 8 gigabyte machines. Um, there's one. Um, I would generally skip those for most things that, that I teach. Uh, you can generally get away with anything at uh, 11. Now, what you might hear is you also want to try 16. Um, that's better for StyleGAN, and guess what? Uh, there is one here. Um, it's at 24 gigabyte GPU. Um, at $4 or four, 44 cents an hour, that's cheaper than um, paper space by a decent amount, and it's uh, like actually a faster machine. So. Um, if you're looking to do some training and this one's available, you might want to take it. Now, there's a couple of things to remember with these. Is um, first of all, you have to do a lot more software installation, and you have to sort of remember what you're doing. So, um, if you've never installed software on a server before, you might want to uh, try and test it out before getting too far into it. Which means maybe what you want to do is download the, like the cheapest machine and then just try and play with it um, to figure out what you're doing. A couple other notes. Um, over here, there are unavailable offers, external offers, and unverified machines. So one thing to keep an eye on is what's the reliability score of these? Um, again, I think Paperspace probably has like a 99.9% .9 uptime. This is about comparable, but if I drop down um, my GPU RAM, uh, let's just say to 9, that'll show some 11s. Um, you will see here that you've got 98s, you've got uh, a couple more 99s, 97. So like you're starting to drip, dip down into a place where running a StyleGAN model 93, um, you might actually have a lot of problems with that. So it's good to be careful and like sort of keep an eye on this. Um, now you could also click on unverified machines. Um, I assume this is something where uh, Vast sort of like a pre-approves a machine um, before it shows up in a list. If you click on unverified machines, you'll probably find stuff that is a lot cheaper. Um, but the reliability score will drop. So actually, I'm going to come back over here, and I think there's a lot. There's a decent amount of 16 gigabyte GPUs in the unverified space. <clears throat> but you'll see, like, here's 96%. Um, so the reliability on these is a little, little bit trickier. So uh, you have to kind of play with these things. Two other things to know. Um, when you come over here and do the edit image config, so right now you'll see this is set up for TensorFlow, um, which is generally, that's usually what I set it to, and it's pretty good. Um, if you click on edit image, um, you'll see that you have some options of TensorFlow, TensorFlow, or the Vast AI TensorFlow. Um, I personally have found the Vast AI TensorFlow easier to use. Um, you might find that when you open this for the first time, it's set to Jupyter Python Notebook. Um, if you're familiar with notebooks and you want to run things through notebooks, this might be better for you. Um, I generally set this to the interactive shell, um, and I, I find it fairly easy to use. Um, okay, so 
These use Docker containers, so if you have a Docker that you like to use, um, you've done this before, you can use this. Um, in general, these sort of, I find that a lot of the Dockers that are here are fine. So you've got one with, already set with CUDA, um, you could get one with PyTorch. Um, <clears throat> these are pretty good machines, and like this will get you most of the way set up. Um, so unlike I think like AWS or something where you have to actually install all the CUDA and stuff, like that's really annoying. This will actually like help you get most of the way there, um, but you might still have to install libraries that are usually already on paper space or that sort of thing. Um, I'm just gonna come over here and click, uh, I think I already have it set to this one. So I'm just gonna set this to select, um, select, make sure all these are set here. Uh, the prices do fluctuate a little bit depending on how much disk space you use. So if you only use 50 gigabyte, or sorry, what is that? Let's try 50. Um, so at 50, you're, you'll are you see the price is just a little bit more expensive. Um, as you crank it up, it gets a little bit more expensive. That's again, just like a storage fee. Um, <clears throat> so I would say, you know, generally don't set it for more than what you need. Um, most of the clap, most of the stuff that I teach will be fine at 200 gigabytes or 150. Um, but if you are doing some like next room prediction stuff, uh, you might want to set this a little bit higher. Um, so this is vast. Uh, there are also interruptible machines. Uh, that basically means that someone could kick you off if they pay a, ha pay a higher price than you. Don't use it. It's not worth it. Uh, just set it to on demand. Um, you'll pay a little bit more, but it also means that no one can kick you off until like you use up all the time. There is a time setting for some of these. Um, try to see. Let's see. Where is it? Uh, sometimes you can set it um, like, oh, max duration. So you could set this for higher. Say you want to do it for a full month. Um, certain machines might disappear because they have settings where they only want you to run on it for a week or whatever. I don't usually find this to be a problem, but it is available if you want it. Um, so lots of filters here to play with. Um, let's just rent one of these and I can show you how to set up uh, this in, um, how to connect to it and those sort of things. So um, first of all, let me just drop this down and let's just find a really cheap machine. And let's just say set it by DL perf per hour. Um, let me just find one that is pretty good. Uh, 240 an hour, it seems fine. Let's just start with that. Um, so I'm gonna rent this one. So you just click on rent. Um, you already have to have set up account. Um, if you need to add money to your account, you can do that in billing. Um, once this finishes loading. Let's let that load on the side while I pull this up. <clears throat> Apparently my internet connection is bad. Okay, there we go. Um, is this running? Yeah, so okay, so billing. Um, you have to add a credit card. Uh, if you do, if, so if you only have your $2 fee in here, um, if you drop below that $2, um, it will just turn off your machine, So, and you could lose your work. So make sure that you're pretty aware of that. Um, I had a credit card, that sort of thing. Um, instances is where your machine actually is set up. So right now, this is being scheduled. Um, it's also going to install a bunch of software. It's going to install that Docker container before it's ready, uh, or before you can even get access to it. So you'll see here now it's starting to set up. Um, it'll take a little while to get it set up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to come over here and just hit the FAQ because... Um, you do have to set up some stuff beforehand, and since it's been a while since I did that, I don't necessarily have um, a demo on how to do that. But let's see here. Ah, so you'll have to set up this. You'll have to set up a key gen. Um, this just like sets up a key authentication, so you can do SSH. So unlike paper or space, there's no username and password. There's just a username, and then it uh, adds uh, it like whitelists your servers into your um, your key authentication. So you have to follow these steps um, to get set up. You then do have to take some of this key text, and you'll have to bring it into um, your account, which I believe is here in your console. I believe. Let's see, um, account maybe. Yeah, so you have to add your SSH keys here. So make sure you do that, um, and you'll get all set up. Once you have all that set up, it's pretty easy to connect to one of these machines. So you'll see here now I'm ready to connect. If I hit connect, um, I'm given an SSH password, or sorry, an SSH port and a, and a connection. So just copy and uh, double click in there, copy this, and then let's open this in terminal. So if I open a terminal command, 
make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, and then you basically just take that command and you paste it. So you'll see here, this is giving me a root. Uh, the root is always the username, and it's telling you exactly what port to match to. Um, when you hit return, it's now going to say, okay, like, uh, are you sure you want to connect? This is going to add this uh, machine to your uh, authentication. So you just type in yes. <clears throat> you only need to type that in the first time that you connect. Now you're opening in, uh, now you're connected to your server. So if I hit ls, um, you'll see there's not much in here. So unlike paper space, it's not like documents, other things, just an empty container. Um, and then here's where you want to start uh, installing software. Now a couple things, um, git does not come pre-installed. So you're going to have to type in a thing called app git, and you're going to type in git. Uh, actually, app git install git. And now you have git installed. So now you can go ahead and let's just grab, let's grab my style again. Link. <clears throat> so you git clone, and style again. Now you're open with style again. And then I think I have, let's see, I have an easy install. So let's just do cd, or actually let's do bash. What are my instructions for installing my own machine? Uh, CD style GAN2. Okay, so. And then bash easy install. So this is now going to install a bunch of the software required to run style GAN. Okay, and now we have a bit of an issue because. These things start with uh, an older version of pip. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do pip install upgrade pip. And then it looks like it didn't install, uh, it didn't install g down. Okay, so pip install. Oops. No, that actually worked. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now I think there's another issue here, which is that leave these start with yeah so I actually think you have to use Python 3 as the command here you do and this comes with Python 3.5.2 which might work for most of style GAN or things but you might need to look into upgrading Python so this is a part of the issue of using these sort of machines they're not as up-to-date as paper space um, but you can get a lot of going a lot of stuff going um, so I'm gonna stop here this is basically like the install requirements you need to do I will say vast is uh, like the nice thing about it is that it is cheap. The harder thing is that you need a little bit more, um, a little bit more command line knowledge and a little bit more uh, use or, or just experience with installing things via the command line. So um, it's not for everybody, but if you do know what you're doing, you can get into it pretty cheaply. Um, now, another thing to note is that if your machine turns off or is like if you're kicked from it, um, let's see what's here, console. So uh, when you again, when you hit destroy, you're going to destroy the machine. When you hit stop, you won't be able to access it. Now, if you hit stop, someone can rent it at the same time that you are connected to it. Um, so it's important that when it's running, it's yours. Uh, but as soon as you stop it, someone else could rent it. And when they rent it, that means uh, you might have to wait for as long as they're renting it to be able to access it again. So this is a really important thing to know is that you want to save a lot of your work either down to your computer or into G drive as soon as possible. Um, cause I've had issues where, you know, again, depending on the reliability of these things, it might just get disconnect and you'll be stuck trying to like figure out how to, uh, get all your work off the machine. So you want to set up some sort of job or just be really diligent to make sure that you pass things, uh, back and forth, um, to your local computer or to some storage system, um, cause it can, can lose this stuff. But, uh, you know, if you can get a really good machine here for 25 cents an hour, like you can do a lot of good work with this, um, especially training. So I will generally mix uh, Vast with uh, Colab just to be able to access a lot of, like be able to do my training on Vast, um, download them to Google Drive, and then uh, be able to connect that to Colab to actually do some training. So you have to figure out how to, what the balance is going to be. Um, but this is Vast. Uh, it's pretty helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if there's issues uh, with actually installing your keygen. Um, and if not, I will see you on YouTube or on my Slack channel. Thanks.